Good morning. Whew. Let me straighten out my beard. I think it froze sideways. Good morning. It is a brisk 36 below zero right now. We're at about 740 in the morning. I decided to stay in bed for the last hour and just kind of lay there and think about how cold it is. <laughs> It got as cold as I've ever seen in my life last night, and then it got even colder. At about one in the morning, I woke up to the sound of, well, it sounded just like 22 shots, you know, that quick report, real sharp, and it was the trees freezing. Then the ice started really getting angry at the air temperature and cracking as loud as I've ever heard it. And I checked the temperature then and it was error. It was in an error mode on my on my thermometer. I think the battery's probably froze and then it came to and then it went out and then it came to and every when it came back to it said negative 41 and I think it was actually colder than that because it aired for oh a good hour after that. I got thinking right around one in the morning that negative 41 and my propane bottles outside and my spare was outside and my battery box to start my snowmobile was in the snowmobile and I said geez I ought to bring those in it's not a whole heck of a lot warmer inside but it is a little bit warmer if you put something in front of a buddy heater it'll definitely get a little bit warmer so at about one one o'clock 115 I ran outside and grabbed the extra propane canister and brought that in and I also brought in the battery box so that wouldn't be completely frozen to start the snowmobile if it needs it today. I am not in any rush at all to do anything outside of camp today. I might fish and I might not. I don't know if it's a good idea to or not. There's no wind, which is nice. I did hear a raven fly by and make a, he made a pretty weird noise calling for friends or food or warmth or I don't know what he was doing but the plan right now is to drink some coffee probably get another layer on on my bottom either put my bibs on or a pair of sweatpants and maybe even another set of wool socks because she's pretty cold the coldest I'd ever seen before today in my life was 38 below zero and it was late in trapping season and I was in northwestern Maine and I remember I went to check my first fisher trap of the day and I didn't have a reliable truck at all I left it running and I went in check that trap and you could tell nothing had moved for animals at all for at least 24 hours and I got back out to the truck and it was still running and I don't know something inside of me said it's not smart to be out 38 below zero day when you could be in camp and put it off till tomorrow you know if something broke down I was at that point I was probably 25 miles from camp about to go even further so I decided to go back to camp and spend the day in camp doing camp stuff so last night the coldest I'd ever seen on the thermometer hit at negative 41 and a half before the thermometer froze so who knows it could have been it could have been probably I'm gonna guess 45 below zero the way it was going and then at 7 this morning I guess at 6 30 this morning it was still 39 and a half below zero and then at 7 30 it warmed up to like 36 below zero where it's sitting right about now coffee time at least get that started everything is crazy frozen in here like even with a buddy heater on low last night like that water is all the way solid i don't think i've ever seen that i'd left some pieces of deer steak in the pan and look at how frosty those got they're almost free those are almost freeze dried they're so frozen I'm pretty sure everything's pretty well frozen, but hopefully the propane doesn't freeze. I, I've been told that freezes at 45 below zero, and we were right there. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Gee, is warming up out there. We are looking at negative 33. It's 8 a.m. Got the coffee on super, super low because I'm sure it was crazy frozen, and I don't want to expand that pot too much not sure what i'm gonna do today if i'm gonna fish or not not a good day to go out exploring snowmobiling alone i'm here i'm here for the day so maybe i'll set a line if it goes well maybe i'll set two you know 
pulling a musky topside in this weather isn't too healthy for the fish. I was thinking about eating one because my buddy Jeff and a couple other people told me it was the greatest fish they've ever eaten before. So maybe I'll pull one topside and flash freeze it and bring it home to eat. Might even cook it up right out here. I got no shortage of food. I brought a lot of food. I always seem to have too much food. Better too much food than not enough. Just from cooking coffee, making coffee, the ceiling thaws out and leaks. It drips like a son of a gun. Drips like a sieve, as you can see right here. The key is to not let this area drip over my bed. So vents open and that's on low. I'm not cranking it high. And I, I could sweep it off, I guess, and get it where it's frozen. I gotta remember to bring like a small tarp or a couple great big trash bags to put over the bed for when this happens. Cause it's just gonna frost up again. So I don't care if it's frosty. I just soon it stay one way or the other frosty or dry, but condensation from heat to cold, just like my beard freezing up outside. I know people say it's the propane, but it doesn't matter if it was a wood stove in here, going from hot to cold, hot to cold. And it's that cold outside, you're gonna have frost built up. The key is to not let it wet my bed. So I don't mind if these areas drip. As you can see, the table's getting wet. But I don't want it to drip over my bed, so I'm keeping this on super low and I get the vent open. First cup. First cup, that's gonna be appreciated. It's still 30 below zero. It won't take long for that to get down to drinking temperature, but it's fun to sip coffee when it's cold outside. And it's cold outside for sure. I just went outside and looked around. I got the whole lake to myself still. We're going almost on, let me think for a sec, 48 plus 60 plus a we're on 69 hours without seeing another person. So that's pretty cool. And I think I might stay one more day. You know, I'll try to brave the elements today. Maybe get out there and fish a little bit once it warms up. Try to catch that midday bite that's been happening. You know, I made one error yesterday or last night that I'm glad it didn't cost me. But I left that second little tiny buddy heater, which isn't much, but it is something. I left it over in that other shack where I fished out of yesterday with the bait and just let it run out. And then, you know, I was kind of planning on it being roughly 20s cold. You can't really expect a 40, 45 below zero. And I got thinking at one in the morning, you know, if anything happened to the buddy heater in here, even though I only run it on low, it does keep the chill off. It would have been nice to have that other one in here as a backup, whereas it was over there. Well, you say it's only over there, but it's still a snowmobile ride away. And who knows if the snowmobile would have started at 41 below. I still don't know if it's going to start right now at 30 below zero. But I'm going to drink my cup of coffee first. And then I think I'm going to go pour a second cup of coffee. And then I'm going to go out and see if I can get the snowmobile started. See how she starts at 30 below zero after a night over 40 below. And if it starts, I'll let it warm up and then I'll make a plan for the day. That old thermos is, <laughs> I've had that for a long time. I think my parents gave me that my freshman year of high school. And I spent a lot of time on the farm with hot and cold fluids getting poured out of it. And a lot of times fishing, a lot of times hunting. She's been through a little bit of abuse, but she's still kicking.
I had the perfect size tarp all along. Just needed a little good old fashioned Yankee ingenuity. A lot of people didn't know Otter makes a bed cover too. So that ought to keep that bed dry if the ceiling starts dripping some. Wow. It came out. That's good. She's still pretty frozen, but she'll thaw out in the pan. Pretty good looking breakfast. I'm gonna drive that into me and drive this cup of coffee in behind it and go out and see if we can get that snowmobile to start. I don't know, what do you guys think? Will it start at 30 below after 40, 40 to five? 45 below zero, night? I got faith in it, I think it will. She might balk a little bit, but she'll turn over. Whoa. She cold. Well, let's see if she's gonna start. What do you guys think? She gonna go? Wow. Negative 31. She's really cold out here. <laughs> well, that's good, that started. I'm gonna let that warm up. I'm gonna go inside and put the rest of my clothes on, put my winter boots on, and then make a plan. I kinda wanted to fish further down, but another part of me wanted to stay pretty close to the shack and I could sit inside the shack and stay a little bit warmer and wear and read some books, but. I kind of want to catch some fish too and try a new area of the lake, so I think I am going to run down. First we'll see if the bait survived the night and assess that situation. It's in that shack I left over there. That'll work. Now, if for some reason it melts down, it won't be dripping on the bed, and the bed will be dry with that otter cover over it. A lot of people didn't know otter made a bed cover like that. Fits just about perfect. All right, sled's warming up. I gotta put on some more layers and go out there and tackle the storm. Guys, if you're planning on doing winter camping like this, I'll show you my setup real quick. I have a wood floor in here that helps keep things flat, keeps it insulated, and makes for a really nice floor so I'm not wicking up a lot of moisture and stuff from just setting on snow. But if you are expecting like, even on regular temperatures, you know, talking from like zero to 30, if you're expecting it to be pretty warm in a hut, you better bring a lot of heat. I don't really run a lot of heat in mine, so like you'll see there's, there's still ice all over the floor and snow on the floor and in that corner there's still snow from when I started and ice over there. So it's not like a hot, hot tent unless you want it to be. If you want it to be, you could crank the heat. I'm sure if you put that buddy heater on high and just left it on high and burn through a bunch of propane, you could probably keep it pretty moderate in here. But 
Whereas I'm not gonna do that. I just have ice and I live with it. It's not a big deal, some snow on the floor. So that's something for you to expect or think about if you're gonna go on a trip like this. Well, did you make it? Oh yeah. Still got some swimmers in there. They're not all looking good though. This one's dead. Not a lot alive. We lost some serious casualties. Oh well. Yeah, we got some serious casualties. Forty below is a little too much, I guess. I probably should have just brought them into the place where I was staying, into base camp. But that shiner made it. Let's see what we have for fishing today. There's one, maybe two alive. Yeah, there's a couple small shiners kicking around. Well, the bait situation isn't great. <laughs> we got enough to do one set, so with live stuff, I think there's, I saw two or three maybe live in there, and then we'll fish dead for the rest. It's not a big deal. They'll eat dead bait too. bit of a main lake point here then should be all shallow grassy just by looking at the map further in I'm looking for oh anywhere from six to ten foot oh you gotta put a battery in those things to make them work lucky for me I got a brand new one here just want to sound it. If I have enough here, I'll set up that shack to jig at him. Ooh, there's no water there. All right, so there, got about that much ice. So there's only about a foot of water there. We'll move out further out. It's pretty frigid this morning. There's a little bit of breeze coming up from the south end. Should make things a little warmer, I guess, being a south wind. Borderline extension needs. There's uh, probably 24 to 32 inches of ice right there. Starts there, minus the ice. Got about two foot there. Two foot of free water under the ice. We'll go further out. We might have to go back up towards the, the bigger part of the lake. I love not having to start an auger, pull start an auger and warm it up and get the gas going. I love just throwing a battery in there and pushing a button. Let's try it one more time. 
If we can't find any water here, we'll move back. about seven foot. I think I'll try it. Seven ought to be enough. I could set a trap here and go out further and jig. So I gotta dig it down some just so my trap reels in the water. Yesterday it made an inch of ice in just a couple hours. And if you're real sitting where that inch is, you're not catching any fish, I guarantee you that. Nice, got a real decent shiner. I had about seven foot of free water here, plus the two to three foot of ice, so it would be ten feet deep. Got a nice shiner there. He's half alive. We'll send him down. Oh, I'll probably put him down about... Let's see. Let me think for a quick second. Yesterday I was catching them about six foot down and ten. So let's put him down about five. Never point that towards your face because if that hits you, it'll smart and pretty quick. All right. Beautiful. We got one set. Let's keep searching. I had I had three live shiners and I got dead. I got a dead shiner, dead sucker, and some dead sea smelt. I think I want to throw a big old sea smelt down there. That looks like a winner right there. Nice and shiny. Nice and dead. <laughs> uh, air bladder first. Got to get that air bladder punctured so, so it doesn't want to float upside down. And that's about it. Let's see, is he going to go down? Yep. Perfect. I hit the air bladder. On a cold day, always peel off an extra 50 foot of line and wind it back on in case it's frozen. So that way the fish won't feel it. There we go. I left plenty of room to get my ax in there or chisel or whatever to break the ice. Well there, that didn't take long. I just ran back to get a pounder propane. She's up. This is the dead one, so we know it's not a bait flag. She's already froze over. It's amazing. I'd like to see it move a little. That's off to the side. Definitely took some. Oh, did he just hit it? Oh, he just hit it again. Man, it's such a big bait. I kind of want him to eat it. I could feel him eating. He's there. I think I'm going to jack him. Ah, I don't know. Should I let him eat it or should I jack him? He's taking it. Jack him. Got him. Got him. Stay on, you dog. Feels like some pretty decent weight. Oh, wow. He ran a mile. All right. We're at our starting point. Oh, broke me off. That's that damn fluorocarbon. Yeah, we're going to switch out of that right now. <laughs> that was pretty good fish. He was he was as big or bigger than the others. I got a quick look at him as he went by. Dang it. Way too cold to be messing around. No more fluorocarbon. That was the only one I had rigged up. Thirty pound parted it pretty easy. Okay, I learned my lesson. Musky are not to be trifled with. No more messing around fluorocarbon with them. We're going straight wire from now on. That was the only trap I had with the fluoro on it. So let's rig one up. This is a good size hook right here, this 2-watt octopus gamakatsu. 
First thing is you put your clevis through or whatever you call them things crimp then your hook and you go back through now we want to get this one let's see yeah we can just do it right here don't really need a tag end that big and crimp it same on the other side with a swivel if I got one no we'll, we'll just go crimp it right to that swivel it's over there Come on, go through there. There, sometimes you just could talk to it. There. All right. Take that. Take that, you son of a gun. All right, got a smelt there that's not too frozen. I'm gonna pop the swim bladder on them. Get that air out. Swim bladder in the gut. There we go. All right, we are fishing again. Oh my god, guys. Look what's on the screen. Oh, I scared him. I scared him. I was trying to get his attention. He was coming in to investigate the camera. Oh my word. I just got my camera set up finally. He must have been coming in to investigate the camera and the light i got the light on because it's pretty dirty tannic water we're only in like seven or eight foot but you can't really see that well so i got the light on and that muskie came in nosed right up to it and i thought i'd be smart and catch him by twitching that bait just to let him know it's there when i did he went nuts scared the holy bejesus out of him and he went flying stirred up the mud twisted the camera but well, maybe he'll be back they're kind of they're curious and they're predators but I got that camera on that big smelt right now, and it's laying on bottom, and hopefully he comes back in and takes a look at it. That was exciting, though. <laughs> he was like an inch from the camera. And then I ran back and grabbed a couple of uh, one-pound canister, propane canisters for this heater here. I don't know how long this lasts. Today will be a pretty good judge. Got her going probably around 9 or so. We'll see when she runs out. And I found this bag of Miss Dunster's Sugar Crescents. Now, if you guys are from Maine or Canada, you pretty much know what these are. But man, Miss Dunster, she is something else. Just about everything she puts out of her bakery. If she was a little bit younger lady and single, she'd be in trouble. I'll tell you that, because she could keep a fella fed through a cold winter. Sugar Crescents will go pretty good with some hot coffee right about now. And I'm going to pour that cup and then I'm going to peek outside and see if we have any flags. Definitely not going fluorocarbon anymore. Everything's switched to... Oh wait, I think I got a tea bag in there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that tea bag out of there. Frozen solid. There's a pretty healthy cup right there. And we'll, we'll drop a sugar crescent about halfway into it. Because they're frozen solid too. Negative 45 probably last night. Everything froze. Yeah, that's good. 
kind of bummed about that first one breaking that off that felt good but they all feel good because they just fight so darn hard we got a high flyer out there guys i'm gonna leave this set up in here and let's go see if we can put one on the ice today <laughs> This will be the first, this is the first one we'd set. So I got my catch bag with me. I'm gonna grab a smelt, just in case. Looks like winter. Try to keep you guys out of the wind a little bit until my GoPro thing arrives. Looks like she's straight down. But that doesn't mean anything with these birds. Going a little bit sideways. I will say they don't do a whole lot of running when I've gotten there. They've been sitting and eating, sometimes even come back. Let's see if he's there. Big head shakes. Got him pretty good. I think he's about average size. A little smaller maybe. No, nah, he's good size. Yep, there he is. No blood coming. First one of the day. Watch those fingers. There we go. Got one on the ice, guys. There's a beauty right there. Put the catch bag to him and get him right back down. Actually, you know what? Is this the one I want to keep? Let's see if he's bleeding bad. I want to try to keep one of these and eat one. Got some blood. Let's see how the release goes. right there got it pretty easy god they're so powerful it's like grabbing a guana by the tail nice. all right got one on the ice Woo. If I want to keep one, I probably ought to really seriously consider it <laughs> keeping one because you never know when's, when you're going to get your last one. That was a good size. I should have kept that one. Maybe I'll keep the next one. We'll see. I don't know which one I like more, the Fan Optics Live Scope or the Markham underwater camera. The underwater camera is pretty cool, I got to admit. It's a little bit harder like to tweak and get dialed in and the water conditions dictate how much how well you can use it i drilled three holes in here as you can see and the camera's over in the corner i was going to originally put the fish down here but it's just too far away to see so it has to be there so visibility on the bottom is like only about two two and a half foot in about nine foot of water here but we did have a muskie come in and check it out which was crazy cool i got one muskie on the ice Broke off one on the last fluorocarbon leader I was using. 
and now I only have two live shiners out there. They're really small, and I have two dead smelts out there, and then this line in here. So I guess if I'm going to try to keep one, I better keep the next one. I should have kept that last one, but I'm just so ingrained about catch and release, I guess I let it go. <laughs> if you guys are just tuning into this series, I am up here in the wilderness of Maine. It has been over 70 hours since I've seen another person or even heard another person. I have this whole wilderness to myself, and I'm fishing for the elusive muskie, which are only in a few bodies of water in Maine, and very few where you're even allowed to ice fish. I made a six and a half hour drive to get up here, and I've been on the ice two or three days now. Let me think, one, two, three. Yeah, three days, and we hit right around 45 below zero last night. My thermometer conked out at 41 below at around 1.15 in the morning. Then it got colder than that because it shut off the thermometer. So I'm guessing 45. It doesn't really matter when you're at those temperatures, I guess. All my bait died last night except for three, three shiners. So I'm going to try to make do with dead bait and those three shiners. Maybe even jig a little bit out of this hole once I get done with this dead smelt that's laying on the bottom. High flyer again. Same trap. It's getting windy out here. This might be the one that goes home. Got no movement yet. This was that big dead smelt we just put on. Already froze up. Oh, there she goes. All right, so we got a fish on there. We're gonna let him chew a little bit because that's a big bait. It's rolling pretty good. I'm sure you guys want to see that. I like seeing that. Oh, of course it just stopped. Just stopped. Starting again. Let's find out what it's all about. Doesn't feel big yet. There we go. Jeez. Jeez. That sucker's got some fight. Holy cow. He's not that close. There we go. Yep. Wow. Got to look at him. He's green. About the same size. All right. What do you think, guys? Good eater size? Yeah, that's going to be an eater right there. Never know when your last one is, so we better take him home. What a pretty fish. All right, we'll go give him a serious Chuck Norris chop. an end to that all right all right little midday update it has warmed up we're we're still below zero by quite a quite a charge but it's blowing pretty hard now there's probably a 10 mile an hour out there so we're probably back where we started in that 40 below range got one i'm going to bring home to eat might even bring another one home for a friend too but I got a feeling there's a lot of meat on this one right here. I don't know, have you guys ever eaten musky before? I've eaten pike, that was great. Pickerel's great, they're all in the same family. But a couple friends of mine that have eaten musky said it's incredible. So leave it in the comments if you guys have eaten musky, what you thought of it, how you like it, and even how you cook it. It's blowing pretty good out there. It's not quite straight sideways yet, but it's getting pretty close. 
and it's still cold it's still well below zero so that wind adds quite a bit to it i don't know what's better you know negative 45 with no wind or wind and negative 10 or 15 probably equals out the same on the spectrum if you guys watched yesterday this shack would have looked a little bit smaller i actually didn't have those front legs pulled out all the way yesterday because <laughs> i pulled them out today and i was like whoa there's a lot more room here you can you could long arm a jig pole whereas yesterday i was kind of short arming it so there's plenty of room there's even more room for the electronics the heater this shack i'd say this the cabin i get asked a lot about the gear i use i'm not at all affiliated with any of these companies but i'd say this size is really good for two people and you'll be a little cramped with two people you know depending on if a guy's bringing video gear and what he's bringing for electronics and a heater and coffee and everything else but it came with two really nice seats the seats are comfortable i have the other one underneath me but yeah i guess two guys could fish in here really reasonable with some comfort and wouldn't be too cramped it'd be close depending on how much gear you brought you know if you're worried about size go the next size up if it's just a single i really like this size for a single you know all sorts of room all sorts of room for my gear and this is the cabin xd pro over or whatever they call it i haven't used it much just two or three times it's been on like five lakes but i've only used it a couple times i bring it with, with the hopes of using it but it just never works out this trip is why i bought this thing is for trips like this where it's brutally cold and then you throw some wind in the mix and just having this shell to block the wind is worth every penny and this little heater is doing the trick i, I know i didn't speak too highly of it yesterday but it's borderline it's like it's gonna be cheap to run it's not ever gonna blast you out with heat i know that but it's pretty it is pretty warm in here it's it's definitely melting the the reels were completely frozen and i put them up in the ceiling and within a minute they started dripping and it keeps the holes from freezing and you know my knees there's no ice on my knees really at the end of the day which is a big thing so it does do the trick for a small area like this i think it's made for like 95 square feet which i don't even know where we are here but that's the update so far guys i'm gonna i'm gonna stick it out one more night and i could fish some tomorrow or i could just pick up and get out of here i got i got a little problem with the snowmobile with the new snowmobile i took it off trail to try to find the trail that i located with my drone there's a trail that goes up to an old logging road that no one's been on and i was like on the edge of the lake and i went to go up on a knoll and i kind of got it stuck and it came down on some alders that were like this big with sharp points for for um that the beavers had chewed and it poked a, a hole in the plastic underneath like the clutch drive gear and i got like a little bit of slippage going on i don't know if it's because there's snow in there or i don't know if i did some damage or i don't know so i don't know enough about it so i'm not going to push it i'd love to take a day and just go snowmobile looking for antlers and stuff but i'm not going to push it at all and i'm going to have to get the machine checked out when i get home bummer with the new machine but had to do it sooner or later right all right not much happening so i took that red eye shad rattle trap style bait and i popped the hooks off it so it's legal i'm going to throw it down the hole and rip it a couple times and rattle it around see if i can't bring something in for a little look see took the hooks off one to stay legal and two so i don't hook my bait that's already down there or the line which i might do anyway i might switch holes but this thing is super super loud when you yank it i don't know if you guys can hear it or not if there's a fish within 50 yards it ought to come in take a look at that smelt on the bottom might cause something to do some investigating it's been pretty dead on camera for quite a while as you can see in here the wind's starting to pick up quite a bit don't really need all that wind it's coming a little south southwest so i gotta be careful because usually what follows a south wind this time of year is a big dumping of snow if it was straight south it'd be warm and facing snow but if it turns a little bit we might face some that south wind's like turd honking for the right away with a big old snowstorm behind it i 
Well, that's the last cup of coffee. It is quarter after three. Wind's blowing like a sieve out there. She's turned straight sideways on us. Bites pretty well died. <laughs> Slowed down. I've noticed with these musky, it either it happens and it happens in a hurry. Blowing straight sideways on us. Got her packed up. Ready for the ride back. I'm gonna go get the heater turned on over at the home base and then probably run a load of this stuff right out to the truck. You guys have no idea how happy that bed cover makes me. <laughs> Look at all that ice on my bed. And the otter cabin cover fit perfectly. Gonna spend the night tonight and work my way out of here tomorrow. I could pack up everything and be in the truck in an hour and it'll be, oh, probably six o'clock. It'll be a half hour after after it's completely dark but then i have i'd have six hours on the road and that's no fun it's no fun driving at night especially when you're tired from from a long trip like this so good night's sleep tonight gonna eat some good food and and uh pack up in the morning and get out of here before the snow comes in there's no way we don't have some snow coming it has warmed up to negative one right now so that's quite a warm up over 44 degrees and in a 112 hour span. So before I get too cozy, I'll probably have to make a couple runs in and out. Um, I'm gonna melt down some snow. I got my coffee pot to fill tonight. I wanna get that ready for coffee in the morning. And then I'll probably drink some evening tea. So in order to have that, we're just gonna melt down some snow. It's as easy as that. Dinner tonight. I don't know, I got so many choices. I got some Demi Moore beef stew. I got some more deer steak. I could do a breakfast for dinner. Well, maybe I'll do a breakfast for dinner. I, I really enjoyed that last trip. You can never go wrong with a breakfast for dinner. We got a pretty serious south wind coming with a little bit of west mixed into it. So we're gonna eat it coming up this lake if it doesn't turn a little bit more west. So right now it's coming pretty much this way at me and it's got, oh, a good straight two miles. If it turns a little west, then we're only looking at about a quarter mile to build up speed. But if it turns south at all, then we got about four or five straight miles to build up some speed. I got this wall tied down to that log because I couldn't get the spikes in the ground or in the ice. And I think that log's heavy enough to hold it back. Plus it's froze in now. Same with that wall. The other wall should be fine. We got woods here here and there it's just these directions right here not so much here more here ah, nice hot tea in the afternoon or at nights pretty pretty good throw some chamomile lavender in the gives you a good feeling at the end of the day that wind is starting to really get angry not sure what she's angry about. I never whistled once today, but she's starting to get pretty angry and she's showing her teeth some. I just moved the snowmobile and the big box sled trailer. I shifted that 
to block the wind and got it a little closer to the shack and swung the box around too. So that should help block some of the wind. If this wall ends up blowing in in the night, even with that log on it, I could always go out and tie it off to the snowmobile. I don't think she's gonna, or I'd go do it now, but that's an option I have if it does. You know, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of fear in me at about one in the morning when, when that was going on and I saw those temps, because I wasn't expecting those. I was dressed for it. I was snugged up in bed pretty good. I had a face mask on where my eyes could come out and I was, it wasn't easy breathing through, but it kept my nose from freezing overnight, which was good. You know, I had to, I'd keep taking it down and up sometimes. You know, I'm not gonna lie, there was some fear that came into me at one in the morning when I saw 41 disappear and get colder. You know, a lot of thoughts go through your head at that point and you think the worst, but you got to plan for it. And that's when I thought, well, shoot, I shouldn't have left that other backup propane in, in the other shack even though it was only a mile away and i got the snowmobile well there's a good chance snowmobile might start not start at 45 below zero and you know that starts getting on my mind and then the propane being outside at 45 below zero that's pretty much slush freezing time for propane too so i went out and got that i went out and got the jumper box at one in the morning and i hate climbing out of bed when you're snugged in you know it's you lose a lot of that body heat, but I did it and I did it quick and got back in and then was probably up for another hour thinking things through and Now, you know if that thing said 20 below I wouldn't even flinch. It's just it's funny how that works out, you know experiences are what Teaches you more than anything, you know, I had what I have about 16 years of school and and the in one or two years working on the farm, I learned more than I did in all those years at the, at the schoolhouse. Just through experience and and doing things the hard way and it's funny you talk we talk about like challenges and challenges you put on yourself or other people put on you. And there was one I remember when I first started working on the farm. And you guys are going to laugh at this cuz it's kind of foolish, but to me, it was a big deal. We milked cows on the farm. Had like 85 head. Worked for Wayne Cunningham, one of the best men I've ever known. Just the hardest working guy to this day I've ever, ever been around. And I remember when I started there, I was in seventh grade and his wife was my fourth grade teacher, Barbara. Just an awesome lady, awesome teacher. I remember she came over one day to talk to my mother and I was loafing on the couch mid morning. <laughs> she said, what's he doing this summer? My mother says, take him. And the next thing I knew I was tits up in a hay field with bales getting thrown at me. <laughs> and first day Wayne had blown out a big tire on a fence post that had, or sign post actually, or like a route 126 sign post got broken off and they left the nub in the Hayfield sticking up six inches so you couldn't see it and he drove right over it. Calcium leaked out of the tire. It was a big tire. It was a big deal. You know, tough day for a farmer. And so he was pretty wound up. Barbara was telling me, oh, it's not always like this. But anyway, long story short, or shorter, I'm working on the farm. We're milking cows. We'd feed the calves the drain milk. Now the young calves would get, they'd get a mixture with some, I don't know if it's probiotics or what it is. They'd get vitamins in their milk with powder and drain milk. The 100 pounders or, or bigger, up to I guess 200 pounders or even bigger, would just get drain milk that was in the pipes with water rather than waste it. You'd, give, you'd feed it to them and they'd get the nutrients from it. And I remember I'd have to carry two five gallon buckets out the milk room, out the door over the big step and out in front of the house you could go in front of the house or you could kind of sneak through in between the barn and the house back then. But most of the time you went in front of the house and up a set of stairs, you know, maybe four steps. And then across the front lawn and then down over the back lawn and then another probably 50 yards to feed them. I didn't, I, I wasn't big in seventh or eighth grade. I mean, I was, I guess I was bigger than most, but still not a big kid. And the buckets, the plastic had been worn off the handles so you're just holding on to straight metal and I never wore gloves and I remember not being able to carry it the whole way because you know they're 40 pounds each and you know that wires cutting into your hand and they're heavy you know your shoulders start burning 
you know it's a pretty good walk and you're not you don't you don't spill any of that you know you can't waste any of that so you don't you're not spilling it for sure and your two buckets balance each other out and i remember the pride i had when i made it past each spot each day and you could tell clear as day where i had to stop and set the buckets down and you know get get that burn out of my shoulders and and uh that wire out from my hands and i'd set it down and there'd be two bucket marks in the snow and it used to it drove me nuts seeing those bucket marks in the snow not make it the whole way and i just wasn't strong enough and tough enough at the time but each day i got i got a chance each day at least once a day to do it and if it wasn't too long before you didn't see any bucket marks at all along that whole path and you know that gave me a lot of pride in myself and a challenge just something as simple as carrying milk buckets to cows you know is is something that if you do that and challenge yourself often it makes a big task when you come up upon bigger tasks a lot easier to to overcome and gives you the confidence to know that you can overcome those so you know when i got into high school and i was playing sports against kids that were pretty soft that had never worked a day in their life or or carried buckets that they couldn't handle at first you know it it gave me quite an advantage in sports and in 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 the classroom and in everything else just having that confidence in myself you know knowing that i could put myself to a test that i wasn't up for at one point but i became up for so hopefully that makes some sense to you guys and you know these trips i just really enjoy doing them i love i love doing it for every aspect of it i love the fishing i love the filming and the videography and the editing i actually love doing that and i love the camping part of it and being in the wilderness and you know we're at three three and a half days now haven't seen another person i've only seen two living things i saw one black raven fly across the lake real low this afternoon and i saw a moose two days ago up in the woods and that's it that's it for living things other than fish challenge like this i just really i just love the challenge of it in every aspect and some days the fishing's the challenge you know like the first day that's the hardest challenge other days the filming's the challenge like today and and uh, even yesterday the filming was awful with with the weather and the, the temperature and then other days the editing is like a couple weeks ago when i had to completely change the software that i've used for like eight or ten years and learn a new software because i was getting these glitches that i just couldn't get figured out and it was driving me nuts so don't ever shy away from a challenge guys if it sounds hard dive in you know relish it be happy that you got the opportunity to try something hard and to, to go for a challenge Come on. I'd say I don't know if I deserve this meal. This is fantastic. But be a full night, full belly, sleep tonight. I threw some deer steak in with those eggs at the end. Wow, that dinner was something else. Oh boy. Breakfast for dinner, if you've never had it, it can really hit the spot. It's almost seven o'clock and we are holding at a negative half of a degree. <laughs> she's being stubborn. She doesn't want to pop it up into the positives. Well, if that's the way she's going to be, that's the way we're going to take it. It's been a cold, cold trip. I am going to wash that big meal down with a nice cup of hot tea. I finished my other book, so I'm going to start in on another one. This one is Forest Life and Forest Trees by John Springer. Comprising Winter Camp Life Among the Loggers and Wildwood Adventure. With descriptions of lumbering operations on the various rivers of Maine and New Brunswick. Pretty awesome. This body of water I'm on was used for a lumbering operation and a log drive in Maine and probably into New Brunswick. Pretty awesome. A viewer recommended this book and I got one copy with the print was so small I couldn't even imagine reading it. So I ended up finding another one that had some a little bit bigger size print. 
I've I got pretty good eyeballs on me, but that other one, the print was so small. But I want to thank you for recommending that. If you're watching, thanks, bud. If you guys have any other really good recommendations, could be anything. Shoot me a recommendation. These books on these trips are just perfect fillers for after dinner. And if you're in the shack and the fish are biting or early in the morning if I wake up early, it's, it's nice to have a book to read. All in all, pretty good day today. I mean, I got two muskies topside. Is it muskies or just musky? Man, that just shows you how few opportunities we have at musky in the state of Maine. They're the state's against them. The Canadians stocked them in a river that comes into Maine, and Maine was all up, up in arms about it. But I'm pretty happy we have them. They're by far the hardest fighting fish I've ever pulled through an ice hole, without a doubt. I mean, three, four, five times harder than a pike. I just can't even imagine catching a 20, 30 pound muskie if it fights just as hard as these five pounders do. Teeth sharper than razor blades. I'm done using fluorocarbon with them. I broke that one off today in the hole. Broke one off yesterday or the day before in the hole. I'm just going to use wire. You know, the, at least this lake, the water's not clear enough to worry about. But yeah, two topside today. Got one. I'm going to bring home. I was thinking about eating it because my buddy said that it's by far his favorite fish to eat. And it got me thinking maybe I'll just swing in, give me a good opportunity to see my buddy and drop it off for him. So hopefully I get out in time to catch him at work or at home and I'll drop that fish off for him see if he's see if he's happy to have it which I'm sure he will be kind of wish I kept two absolutely beautiful fish and pretty awesome trip kind of hate to leave I I think what we have here is a pond that's I hate to call it stunted but I think all the fish are going to be about the same size and there's very little feed from what I've found with the pan optics I mean I was seeing some yellow perch yesterday that were like this and the first day you know if that but nothing of catching size and no i didn't see suckers i didn't see shiners i mean i didn't cover the entire pond but i got a feeling these musky have eaten themselves out of house and home and that's about the size they're going to be in unless some new feed gets introduced here but i'd hate to be a baby muskrat trying to swim across this thing or a baby duck in the summer because i don't think you'd have a chance Maybe even a small beaver. Not sure how cold it's supposed to get tonight. I'm thinking probably in the negative tens, maybe. You know, it's not. it's been holding right around zero to negative one for the last hour, hour and a half. The wind's ripping pretty hard, and it's a good south wind. So I have a feeling within the next day or so, we're going to have a scorcher of a snowstorm. So I want to get out of here before that and get my snowmobile looked at and make sure I didn't mess anything up with that thing thanks for tuning in guys if you like this series let me know in the comments if you want to see a new series with something else on there that'd be a great place to let me know and really appreciate you guys and the support you guys have for the channel and it's it helps drive me even harder on these trips and and go at it even harder so really just want to say thank you for viewing thanks for checking in thanks for being a part of the community and and i'm already excited for the next one I have no idea what it is yet but it's going to be a good one i promise you that oh yeah tune in for tomorrow for takedown day clean up camp day and try to get out of here day i have a pretty big day ahead of me i'm going to try to make a couple stops on the way home too and drop that fish off for jeffer and
want to eat a smell too? Right. <laughs> they're actually pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, that's what I caught them on. I caught you a delicious oh. musky. Look at that. How come you're not going to eat them? Well, I only caught There she is, guys. Fixed up. I can't have nothing nice. Poked right through, but stopped at my dealer. And I'm not even home yet. Let's take a look. How's it look? <laughs> Everybody's got a wall of shame. <laughs> that didn't last long, did it? No, it didn't last long. So there's supposed to be a piece here. 